is Adventist World Radio Ghana. Voice of Hope. A-W-R Ghana. Voice of Hope. Voice of Hope. magazine and under this segment we have reflections youth corner and moment of truth i am kojo and sedu and i'm presenting this with hannah b nyakun how are you doing today hannah i'm doing well and you i'm doing well as well i hope dear listener you enjoy our programs stay tuned Ghana, voice of hope voice of Announcement. Cherished listener, please take note of the change in frequency. Our current frequency of 11955 kHz will be changed to 9830 kHz from the 27th of October 2013 to the 29th of March 2014. I repeat, our current frequency of 11955 kHz will be changed to 9830 kHz from the 27th of October 2013 to the 29th of March, 2014. Have a mirror image. I hope you do. Come join me as we take a purposeful contemplation of our lives. This is the program Reflection. Be holy. Holy living promotes holy praying. First Peter chapter 1 verse 15. This was read from the book God's Little Book of Prayer by Richard Daly. And I am Andrew Boatin Bexen.
Welcome, listener. This segment is about the youth and their lives in today's world. The program is Youth Corner. Aimlessly beneath the barren sky. Leave it to me. I lead you home. Won't be long before your sun goes down. Just leave it to me. I lead you home. Hi, listener. Welcome to your favorite youth program, Youth Corner. I'm your host, Russell Mensa, and today we are having the third part of our discussion. Healthy youth relationships. To have this discussion with me, we have again Emma Lindate, John Luis Opata, Ba I Kusi. Guys and lady, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last time we met here, we spoke about the pressures that go into marriages. Just because people feel there's this bond as a result of intimate moments that they share. And this sometimes mark the relationships while they are still young. Ba, what is your take on intimate relationships that are quote-unquote unhealthy? For me, I think no matter who you are, wherever you find yourself, you should indulge in any unhealthy relationship. In the sense that at the end of the day, as we said, the basic aim of every relationship is to make sure that everybody in the relationship and around the relationship should be comfortable. And then at the end of the day, you should have an improvement in your life as a result of joining that particular world or being involved in that relationship. relationship. So if none of this is achieved, then I don't see why that relationship can be classified as a healthy one. Obviously, it becomes an unhealthy one. The situation where you keep on calling the person constantly, that doesn't show that you love the person. That doesn't show love to me because there is insecurity in love. And that is a very big there, issue. Is, in relationships. There is insecurity in love. The Bible says that perfect love casts away fear. So as long as fear comes in, the love is questionable. Exactly. And also to add to what the pastor said, you see, for you to ever experience a healthy relationship, what values do you even have? Okay. You see, you can only take what you encourage. You don't have to complain about what you've permitted. You understand? Okay. If you're a lady and then a guy taps you on the back, and then you smile and you laugh. What makes you think the guy will do the next day? It's encouraging. You know, exactly. So you yourself should be the standard of a healthy relationship. Okay. Do unto others what you want to be done unto you. It's a very simple principle that cannot be shaken. From what you said, it means that we are supposed to be the element of change you want to see. Thank you very so much, my if, brother. Um, let's say you want a healthy relationship. You have to show conduct or behaviors that will prove that really you are into a healthy relationship. The Bible says, he that must have a friend should show himself friendly. Okay. That is it. That's just the principle. So carrying on from there, how can you make all these talks that we're having about love and being the elements of change reflect in, let's say, a teamwork as a group has been given an assignment to do as a team? How could you make it reflect? Because a typical example, you'd have group members who are not always cooperative with you. And as head of the group, you battle within yourself. What should I do to these people? And on and on and on, because you all want to make your mark. You want to make the best grade out of that course. And yet your team members are not being cooperative with you. How can you make all this we are saying transcend into the least relationship that you think of? You just reminded me of something. Back in school, when we were students, you are having to write examinations and then your friend says you should help the person in the examination hall. They tell you, if you don't do that, you're not friends. Do you know that's a situation? Yeah, they tell you, oh, as friends, you should help each other in the examination hall. And then now teamwork. What point am I trying to say? Discipline. The fact that I'm your friend doesn't mean I should help you bend or break the rule. I don't know if Ba or Pata agree with me. Yeah, very true. You should not break the rule. You should actually encourage a standard. We said something that a friend should make you a better person. That's it. How do I make you a better person if I encourage you to fall? Even they if I think you, the person do the wrong thing, it's teamwork and it's expected. Everybody should bring their contributions. And I don't allow you, for example, they say, do not let the name of the person be in the group work if the person doesn't do it. Okay. To some extent, some people might say, oh, if as a group leader and I listen to my lecture, I'm being unfair. When you go to work, 
the work setting because you had been trained to go to the work. You will do the same thing again. Have I made that person a better person? That's the question. If you can answer that question, then you will know whether you are being a good friend or not. Any comments? Well, I believe that it's a very fair thing to say and that you encourage your friend, partner, whoever it is you're in a relationship with to be a better person. And so for that matter, you do the right thing so that you don't force the person to do the wrong thing. So that at the end, all of you come out as better people. Exactly. I think in a university in Ghana, there's a policy that has been introduced such that a student will trust himself not to copy from another student. Okay? If someone is, sees another copy, let's use those of us here for an example. We are taking an exam together. And I see, let's say, John asking Emily, what I am supposed to do as a third party is to report. That's the, the policy. That's the policy. <laughs> okay, so then there is some sort of policy from above to check the individual's discipline levels. So like Emmaline mentioned, your discipline is key. Once you're disciplined enough to make sure that your partner, your friend, companion, colleague, whatever it is, is doing the right thing, at the end of it all, bars comment, we are all going to come out as better people. So moving on from there, I believe we've had a very insightful session and we are going to continue on our next session looking at the signs of a breaking down relationship. When I say breaking down relationship, the signs that show that this relationship is an unhealthy one. So I've had this discussion today with my colleagues, Emily Date, John Luis Pacha, and the show was ably produced by Kofi Holman. I've been your host, Russell. Thank you so much, listener, for listening in. Have a good day. Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box, AF595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, please send us an email through awr at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 030 Zero five eight. The number again, zero three zero seven zero five one zero five eight. I make the mistake of working on my own, but then I wait to see I can alone. You wrap your arms around me, then you comfort me and give me just what I need. Answer my prayer. You will answer.
When tough times annoy, I can count it pure joy, perseverance. The trials that I've had and the things I've done, the good and the bad comes to everyone. But any situation, it's assuring to know any time I can go. Cherished listener, this is the moment of truth where truth is presented with precision and exactness. Enjoy this encounter of a lifetime. Welcome once again to Moment of Truth. I'm exceptionally happy to be here once again that we can study the Word of God together. Today, we want to continue from where we left the other day, the promise of His presence, part two. And our scripture reading is still from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 14 and 15, which says, The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Let us pray. Dear Father, once again as we open before us your word, we are asking for the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will help us understand your word and apply it to our lives. Thank you because we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. The promise of his presence. When chill falls over the earth, I want you to understand that God's presence is with you. When the birds hush their singing and only the crickets compose a nocturnal symphony, God's presence is with us. God's presence attends his people when the moon has made its majestic march to its appointed throne, gleaming against the black curtain of creation. God's presence is with us when the dew has kissed the ground. When the hoot all takes his post and all the other animals have found their way to their dens and caves. God's presence is with us when the night is black as a pit from pole to pole. When it seems that those who are sick get sicker, I want you to understand that God's presence is with you. When our fears are at their height, when our anxieties know new levels, when our despair deepens, when our destiny is undetermined, and when our future is unsure, His presence will abide with us. I came to tell you that we have the promise of His presence. It is not a conditional promise. It is not a provisional promise. It is a perpetual promise. I have put my name there, and my eyes and my heart shall be perpetually there. Hallelujah. Psalm 32, verse 8. If we stay on the word and under the cross, he will be here. Through the storm and through the rain, his presence will be with us. In the good times and in the bad times, God's presence will be with us. When the host of hell assails us, his presence will be with us. When the wind blows and the storms come upon us, God will be with us. When the death angel comes, and bear some home, he will be with us. When we walk through the valley and shadow of death, he will be there. When high mountains get on our way, he will be with us. When deep valleys make us stumble and fall, he will be with us. When we are climbing up the rough side of the mountain, he will be with us. When men won't do right, he will be with us. When the heavens weep, the seas, 
and rivers fill, he will be with us. When the lightning zigzags across the purple either of the night, the Lord will be with us. When the tender clears her throat in the heavens, the presence of the Lord will be with us. His presence will be with us. He says, Go teach all nations my commands. I will be with you till the end of the world. All power is entrusted in my hands. I can destroy. I will defend. I will be with you. He told Joshua, As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And that is the promise to all of us. As he was with Moses, he will be with you as well. The Lord will be with us. He will be with you, as he told Isaiah. When thou passest through the waters, I will be there. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Because his presence will be with you. He will be with you, Jesus said. Where two or three are gathered, I am with you. Whenever you mention my name, oh, I am with you. I am in your midst. He will be with you. Jesus stood on a mountain top one day and declared, Between time and eternity, go ye therefore into all the world, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. His presence will defend you. His faithfulness will abide with you. His holiness will wash you. His justice will justify you. His kindness will keep you. His mercy will mold you. His truth kiss will march with you. And his word will hide you. There is somebody here who feels depressed, so confused, so stressed. You think all is lost. You think you can't do anything. You think it is too late. I want you to stop panicking because God says, I am with you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. As I was with Joshua, I will be with you. As I was with the people of Israel, even before the Red Sea, I will be with you. As I was with Isaiah, with Jeremiah, with Ezekiel, I will be with you. As I was with Daniel in the dens of lions, I, the Lord, will be with you. Why are you afraid? Why are you confused? Why are you so desperate? You don't know what to do. I want to assure you, dear friends, Jesus will be with you. He will be with you in your troubles. He will be with you in your trials. He will be with you in your temptations. Just cheer up. Just laugh at your problems. Just leave them at the feet of Jesus. He will take care of them because he is a specialist in turning what looks like a defeat to victory. What is your problem? What are you going through? What are you, your trials? Do you think all is lost? Do you think you cannot make it in life? Do you think life is too difficult for you? Do you think you can't do anything? That is why you want to end your life? My brother, I have a good news for you. Cheer up. We have a God who promised to be with us. And his presence will never, and I want to say again, his presence will never leave us alone. His presence will always abide with us. A man was traveling a long journey and he prayed and said, Lord, if you will go with me, I will go. But if you not go with me, I will not go. He started a journey. He could see an angel on the right, another angel on the left, one in front, one behind. This man was so happy. He was rejoicing. He was happy. He was cheerful because God's presence was with him. He got to a place. He turned around. The angels were still with him. And he continued the journey. And he said, yes, Lord, you are with me. He was singing. He was so excited. Then just before he could end his journey, he got to a place that seemed so dark. So dark that he could not do anything. He turned to his left and to his right. He couldn't see anybody. Behind him and in front of him, he couldn't see the angels anymore. When he started walking, he started stepping on nails and broken bottles. He started crying. He told God, you see, I told you that if you will be with me, I will go. But if you not be with me, I will not go. You were with me. Now you, you just disappeared and left me all alone. Why? Yet he continued the journey. When he crossed that darkness, he saw the angels. And he said, you, 
you promised to be with me and you have left me all alone to walk on these nails and broken bottles. Please, go away from me. You are not trustworthy. You are not truthful. Because when there is trouble, you leave me all alone. Then Jesus said, My friend, when you were walking on the broken bottles, I carry you in my hands. When there was darkness, I became light for you. When you were afraid, I was the one encouraging you to continue walking. My dear friends, this is the promise of God. He has not left us. Even in our troubles, in our trials, in our temptations, He will be with us. I want you to cheer up. I want you to be happy. I want you to rejoice because Jesus says, Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. I'm glad that you believe that Jesus is with you. Let us pray. Dear Father, we want to thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to listen to your word. Bless all of us. Bless all the listeners. Those who are confused and discouraged, Lord, encourage them. Let them know that you are with them in their troubles, in their trials, and in their temptations because you promised that you will be with us. Thank you for accepting to be with us because we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. I am Pastor Akaosa Dennis Elisha. Announcement. Cherished listener, please take note of the change in frequency. Our current frequency of 11955 kilohertz will be changed to 9830 kilohertz from the 27th of October 2013 to the 29th of March 2014. I repeat, our current frequency of 11955 kilohertz will be changed to 9830 kilohertz from the 27th of October 2013 to the 29th of March, 2014. Our address, Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box, AF595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, please send us an email through awr at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 030 058. The number again, 030-7051-058. I am blessed being a part of this program. Hannah, what about you? The same here. So I believe, listener, you did too. This has been once again, Kwejo and Sedu and Hannah B. Nyaku. God, God bless, bless you. you.